Hey, Wall Street's starting to get 2020 vision. We heard from two oh. titans of investing today on CNBC, and they both laid out what they think will happen to the market if President Trump loses re-election. Leon Cooperman kicked it off this morning on Squawk. If Elizabeth Warren is elected president, in my opinion, uh, market drops 25 percent. Bernie Sanders, same thing. And that sentiment was echoed by Franklin Templeton's Mark Mobius just a short time ago. Take a listen. That if uh, Trump is not reelected, the market will go down. I mean, I don't know how much, but 20 percent, 25 percent is probably possible. Let's bring in Dan Suzuki, portfolio strategist at uh, Richard Bernstein Advisors. Dan, great to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Would you agree? Uh, I think, listen, the market's going to stay very uh, short-term focused when, when you're getting the election polls uh, in. And I think that in the near term, you know, I think my view is that you're choosing between, you know, you want the wrench or you want the belt. I mean, I think there's going to be things that the market's going to have a difficulty stomaching uh, in the near term because if, with Trump, I mean, the more popularity he gets, the more likely he is to re get reelected, the more likely he's going to put pressure on our trading partners. And clearly the market doesn't like that. On the other hand, you know, we know that the market doesn't like higher taxes. We just got these corporate taxes. Now you're talking about rolling them back along with all the other taxes. I think, you know, from a short term perspective, the market's going to prefer Trump because it's the devil they know versus the devil they don't. But in the longer term, we longer don't know term, how it will shake out. I, I think, you know, the, the issue right now is that we're losing our trading ties with a lot of our trading partners. We don't have any end of this in sight. And so the uncertainty is weighing on businesses. The longer this goes on, you're hearing it from the corporates that, mm -hmm. you know, longer this goes on, the more ways on growth and the more likelihood that we go into recession. Is part of that weighing now on the consumer, in your view, after we got the retail sales numbers this morning? I think it is. I think that, you know, probably everyone you know that doesn't care about Wall Street and your family, when you sit around these, like, holiday dinners, is starting to talk about, is there a recession? I'm getting the, reading these articles about a recession. It's showing up in, in the consumer numbers. I think that, you know, it's the one area of the economy that people are pointing to as the strength. You know, everything else is rolling over. People are hanging their hat on the, the consumer. I think that's a little bit misplaced. If you look at the actual numbers that come from the government, they peaked a year ago in terms of the, the personal spending numbers. They've been coming down, and I think that's going to be the continued trend. Are they falling off a cliff? No. But what are the things you look forward to to see where consumer spending is going? You, you look at confidence. You look at their ability to pay bills, which is their job. You look at uh, their wealth. Uh, and you look at you look at their ability to borrow money. All these things are slowing. You know, job growth is probably the sl if you look at job growth, it's the slowest since 2011. And the leading indicators, whether it's the Conference Born Employment Trend Index uh, or some of these other indicators, they're showing job openings have, have started to roll over. Consumer confidence already started to roll over. Uh, you know, we're still at these high levels. Nothing's falling off a cliff, but directionally they're going the wrong way. Cons consumer within the credit side, I mean, we're just hearing all from all these banks. Mm -hmm. It's the one area of credit where actually banks are tightening their lending standards. Uh, so that's actually going the wrong direction as well. So you look at all these things. If you get more volatility in the stock market, which I think you will, that's not a great recipe for continued resilience out of a consumer that's already slowing. Yeah, there's no question of consumer spending money. I mean, Brian Sullivan tweeted yesterday about not being able to get a car and it was Newark Airport. You couldn't get a parking spot. Fact. Packed. 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 So I'll, and I'll be, listen, I will admit that, but it doesn't mean they should be spending. So my pushback, what derails, what is the one thing that could derail consumer? Understanding it might be turning, what derails consumer confidence? Uh, I think that stock market volatility is going to weigh on consumer confidence. So if you get like a big drawdown in the market, 5 to 10 percent is probably enough here with all these concerns of recession, along with layoffs. Right. I think job growth is slowing. I just mentioned job growth is the slowest since 2011. Job job openings are really rolling over. So if people can't hold a job anymore, uh, you know, CSX just reported they were able to hold the line on costs. One of the reasons they were they were cutting you know, labor, the labor force is down six percent year over year, something like that. If you see that trend continue as companies try to rein in costs, well, that is along with you know, the fact that the companies are dealing with rising wages, you know, that that could actually, you know, cause cracks and more cracks in the consumer. Let me just push back on that sure. a little bit. Um, we're seeing a lot of wage pressure, right, mm -hmm. which is a, yeah. a contradiction to, um, you're saying, slowing jobs, right? The, the employed worker is making more, yeah. and there's pressure for them to be making even more money. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that, wouldn't that sort of push the other way on your theory? 
Well, that does offset it, but I think if you look at historically, that, that's actually pretty normal. Toward the end of the cycle, you start to see inflationary pressures. Com workers are actually making more, but then companies are, are making less money. Growth is rolling over. They're laying off workers. And at some point, those wages roll over. Wages is probably one of the more lagging indicators in those numbers. And so that's sort of the dynamic you're faced with. It's more of a timing issue than anything. And I think, you know, the fact that wages may go up in the near term, CPI may go up in the near term, puts pressure on the Fed, which is sort of the other part of this, uh, because, you know, typically late in a the cycle, they have to contend with slowing growth and rising inflationary pressures. I mean, if you just take oil prices stable from here, it would imply that, it would imply that you know, headline CPI is going to be well above two by the end of the year. Dan, good to see you. Thank Thanks you. For me. Dan Suzuki, RBA. Um, not surprisingly, given Dan's outlook, mm -hmm. he, uh, his sector picks are staples, health care, real estate, and utilities. Decidedly defensive. Would you agree? Well, yeah, I would agree with the picks, but I'm going to go back to one of the first statements he made where it's the devil you know versus the devil you don't uh -huh. know. You have one devil that is up at all time highs with deregulation and lower taxes, and you have another devil that is approaching a federal income tax rate of 70% to 90%. The market is not going to like that. I do like the defensive picks, but I think the market is pretty much a binary thing right now. Trump is market friendly, the rest are not. Would you agree? In terms of the, you know, yeah. it's funny. I mean, prior to the 2016 election, there were people that said, I Everybody might have been one of them. Everybody got it wrong on that, on the, that the one. Market, if Trump gets Ooh, elected, right, the market's exactly. going to be down 20%. And I got to tell you something, for about six hours that night, because I was right. on but, TV. But that was because people thought he was going to blow up the world, not because of deregulation and, and, <laughs> yeah. and everything. Clock's it's still not, still still time. Time. It's still not it's over. Still time. Um, <laughs> healthcare but, makes a lot of sense. Okay. I mean, you saw the UNH numbers yesterday. I know Pete's talked yeah. about this. The UNH numbers were outstanding. Valuation at this price is still too cheap. That is just one stock. I get it. But even these big cap pharma names make sense in this environment.